the whole crypto market is going sideways or is dipping. But nevertheless, we're basically still in the vicinity of the old all-time highs. The question is, when will it get interesting again? After all, we're in the middle of a bull market. Will this recent correction continue into a capitulation event or are new all-time highs just around the corner? And most importantly, are altcoins going into the next round of mania and euphoria? As always, I have the answers for you in this video. We will look into all the parameters to make an informed decision. And we will also use some of the tools I've built in the meantime. Be curious, let's go. Let's face it, the last two weeks in crypto were pretty boring. It was basically this small sideways range here with a dip that began right around the 1st of April. This is actually not a coincidence, but I will talk about this later on. Personally, I used this boring crypto time to build multiple tools to help us get an edge over the market on this channel. And I think I can confidently say they are now ready to be shown to the public. Three of these tools you can see right here on the chart. They're basically top notch indicators for TradingView that I've developed myself. I'm actually using these for myself for a long time, but I've completely rebuilt them, made them easier, made them more precise, added a lot of features based on my experience and made them visible on the chart. So meaning these indicators, you won't find them like this anywhere else. They're combining a lot of important information. And I can tell you, if you know how to read them, you will play the market like a bad boy. So this is just a teaser. From now on, we will use all of these tools in my videos. And to be clear, what you're seeing right now is three single indicators that can basically be used on any time frame. So basically the Philprints reversal bands, the Philprints premium trend finder, and the Philprints multi time frame moving averages. And then the fourth indicator is the Philprints FIP bands. You will see what's up with that soon, but what I can tell you right now is it nailed every single cycle bottom of Bitcoin. And quite frankly, every top as well. Might sound impossible, but it's actually the truth. And the cool thing is all of these four indicators, they're not just usable for crypto, they're usable for every financial instrument. So stocks, commodities, Forex, doesn't matter. But there's more. There is a fifth tool, and this is not an indicator. This is a whole analytics dashboard, and it's basically an X-ray for token demand. And the cool thing is you can use it for so many tokens. If they're residing on Ethereum, Polygon, Arbitrum, Optimism, the Avalanche C chain, the BNB chain, or the base chain. So this means you can basically put any token into this and it'll generate all of this information based on what I've built. It'll tell you what is using behind the scenes. It'll tell you what is moving price. It'll tell you what the smart money is doing, if they are accumulating before the price moves, who the smart money is, what is in their wallets, and how are they doing overall. For this as well, I will get into detail in my next videos where we will do token analyses and use it in action. And as I said already, from now on, we will use all of the five tools I've just shown you. So stay around to learn more about them. They have a lot to offer. Quite frankly, they give you an edge and let you read the market and not just guess. Or let me put it this way. They provide you with a smart money view of the market. Furthermore, I've put in a lot of effort into ease of use. So even if you're new to crypto, I think you'll understand them pretty quickly. Also, don't forget to come into my free Telegram group. I'm actually thinking of providing one of these five indicators completely free of charge for Telegram group members only. So join now if you don't want to miss out. Link is down below. All right, now let's get to the current market situation and what to expect. There are actually people that think the cycle is through, that think this was the top. And now we will go down. And what I can tell you right away, there is always the possibility for a bigger retracement. But that doesn't mean that the bull market is ending. And apart from that, calling out the end of a bull market while the price is still above major EMAs is a bit early. One catalyst for a bigger retracement would be this. The US government is preparing to sell 30,000 Silk Road Bitcoin. And this would be the first time since March 2023. So first things first, what is Silk Road if you don't know it? This was one of the first marketplaces that used Bitcoin as payment. It was basically a black market and the first modern darknet market founded by Ross Albrecht. Silk Road was basically known for its illegal drug marketplace and other illegal and legal product listings. Therefore, it was shut down in October 2013 by the FBI and Ross Albrecht 
is serving life imprisonment and he's actually active on twitter while being in prison because his fiance is running the account based on letters he is writing now the bitcoin that have been confiscated by the fbi when they shut down silk road is kept in a wallet that we can actually track on arkham and there you can see we've had a transaction five days ago on april 2nd where the u.s government moved some funds of this wallet to coinbase and if we have a look at this it looks like all of the 30,000 Bitcoin, which equals around $2 billion, has been moved. But this is not the case. It was just a 0.001 Bitcoin test transaction. And this could indicate that soon a bigger stash or the whole wallet will be dumped on the market. And if this happens, this could in fact cause a dump. The last time they sold around 10,000 Bitcoin in March 2023. It was actually funny, the US Marshall Service is one of the largest Bitcoin sellers to date. They have helped the US government sell a total of 195,000 Bitcoin over time. The next concept that is pretty much going around is the so-called pre-halving dump. And to be more precise, it wasn't always just a pre-halving dump. It was more of a dump around the area of the halving. For example, in 2012, we had around a 20% dump before the halving. And even before that, we had an even bigger dump at around over 40%. Then in 2016, we had basically a pre and after halving dump. The one before was around 25% and after the halving it continued another 26%. Then the last halving in 2020, we had not exactly a pre halving dump. It was in fact even bigger because this was the well-known Corona dump, which from top to bottom meant around minus 60%. And then after the halving, instead of another dump, we had this long sideways range. Now with the halving this year, it is just around the corner, around two weeks. And actually it's not that comparable at the moment. We did have, if we measure from week to week a around 17 18% correction but not a real dump even before that for months and months on end you could count this little dump as the bitcoin spot tfs were announced this was also around 15% but nothing too big so if this washout procedure is to repeat itself we could look at a bigger washout correction before continuing up higher speaking from a cycle perspective the price action is pretty early because we have a little bit of a discrepancy here price wise we're likely at this point here in time and this is something i've talked about a lot in prior videos it really looks like this is similar also with a bit of a sideways range before moving higher but time wise this is a lot different as for example in last cycle the real parabola started just after the halving and here we had it before. This would also mean that we are pretty much in the middle of the cycle, not at the beginning. So th just this part here is missing, or, or this part if you will. Now the thing is, if we look at the cycle of 2016 and 2012, there it looks a little bit different. We did have a pre-halving rally, pretty big ones, and then the real parabola, and this was pretty sizable and for a longer amount of time, not just this small pump. So this means if we're not looking at the price parameter, but at the time parameter, we could look at something like this. Basically also the bottom looks more similar to the 2015 bottom with this two bottom structure here as well and the run up to the halving this will then as i said maybe mean a bigger retracement after the halving and then a bigger and longer parabola now the next thing is and i don't want to rule it out of the equation as you can see here last bull market we had this double top structure and this is something we've never had before in this fashion of course in 2013 we had this double top structure but this was a lot more elongated. In 2021, it just looks like the dead cat bounce, which normally is lower than the actual top, as you can see here, or even here, here every time, turned out to be bigger than expected. And what if, and before I say it, I just want to prime you, this is just an assumption, just to have a well-rounded picture about what could happen. I'm not saying it will happen. What if this, what we're seeing right here, is an oversized echo bubble just like we had in 2019 and if this would hold true and i'm actually not think it is too likely i was just thinking of it lately as a possibility this would mean to the top another 651 days 
and would mean the cycle is a lot longer and we have a lot of time left. This would then mean that the bull market is ending in December 2025. And this is actually what is to be expected for a normal bull cycle length. But with the price action we've seen and if it will continue just as in 2020, this would basically mean that the cycle could end at the end of this year or around mid of next year. So in the end, the echo bubble scenario would mean a longer bull market, would mean you can scoop up tokens for cheap, we have a bigger rally afterwards, and the price-wise scenario, meaning we're right here, would mean we have maybe around a year to go instead of one and a half years with markets going vertical. If we now go back to the more short to midterm view instead of the overall long-term view, you can see that price just hasn't decided yet where to go. It does not necessarily look bearish or something like that. What we definitely can see is that the reaction of the EMAs is not as sharp as before. So here we touched it, went up right after it, the second time as well, even bigger pump. And this point in time just creeped around, small pump directly back and creep up slowly and steadily. So price is speaking for itself and this is not necessarily a bad thing that this took more time. This just means that there is not too much aggressiveness in the market, but on the other hand could also mean that the buying interest is not as strong and therefore a dump is more likely. Either way, it indicates that the funding rate is reset and that is actually the case. Since April 1st, uh, you can see it's basically flat, even negative on Deribit. And before that, we had crazy spikes and funding rate coming back up right after it was reset for a short amount of time. This also indicates that markets at the moment are mainly spot driven. And for a bigger leg up, this is a good thing. So another possibility of course is we will creep up for a longer amount of time. This will get more narrow and narrow and then when nobody expects it, Bitcoin breaks out in a big fashion. This is actually something we're seeing time and time again. And this is also something my indicator is spotting. Without my indicator, you just see there is sideways ranges, but you don't know when it will break out, when it is likely that it will break out. Is it here, here or here? But this is actually not a thing of coincidence. This is a thing of mathematics. There are areas where it starts to get more likely that a big parabola will happen right after it. And this is, for example, what you can see here in this marked area. This will be marked out automatically. Also here, this is exactly the areas before big lag ups, as you can see. Without the indicator, there's basically no difference between this area and this area. Then again, even before that, this area right here, you can see there's a long, long sideways range before that. But here, the indicator marked it and parabola was right after it. Here again, it actually took some time, but big parabolas, two of them actually, and so on and so forth. For example, here, also took a bit of time, but then big, big parabolas. Now you can see recently we had two signals as well. The other parabolas were a bit more shallow. This one here and this one here actually took some time, but either way, if you would have bought these areas, you would be up, even if you hold it, would be up from this one and from this one. And why is it that this is just more flat than this one? This is basically because I'm calculating these areas based on two concepts. You could say it has a dynamic concept calculation and a absolute static concept calculation. Also for sideways ranges, the reversal bands give you the tops and bottoms very nicely here as well and so on. But they actually tell you a lot more in other market situations as well. More on that another time. But what we should monitor for the next short to midterm is if we get another of these signals here. So this would mean that my reversal bands would narrow down a little bit more and give us a signal to expect a leg up. Now, if we would actually see our first mid-sized dump or bigger dump compared to the last months, the price target I would look at is the EMA 200 on a daily basis. As you can see, we are still in the four hour chart, but my multi time frame moving average indicator is able to change the moving average regardless of the time frame we're looking at, while the other moving average is still in the four hour mode. So in this case, we would look at around $48,500. So we would look at a 30% dump from current prices. I'm sure this would shock a lot of people. This would wash out a lot of people, 
but it won't end the bull market. It'll just be the first touch of the daily EMA 200 since October 2023. More long-term rallies started. That's everything. Now, in this case, I hope you're aware, if Bitcoin does minus 30%, all coins will bleed the hell out. They will do minus 50, minus 60%, and this will be a heck of a buying opportunity, especially for people that are just coming into the crypto markets. This is basically a fire sale for altcoins. So let's see what we get. So there you have it. That is my current view on the market. What could happen for this whole cycle? What could happen in the short to midterm? An in-depth update about what happened in the last two weeks where I didn't upload any videos, but was intensely working on the five tools I've shown you to analyze the market in every way possible. I am myself. I'm thrilled to make more videos again. I'm looking forward to what market is doing. Of course, for more alpha and content, I told you come into my Telegram group it's free. And as I said, I'm thinking of making available one of the tools for free for Telegram members only. So there is, of course, a benefit compared to when you're just looking at my videos on YouTube. Either way, of course, don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube to become part of the Philprints community. I hope you get massive value as always. Of course, this was not financial advice. Please always do your own research and due diligence. Until next time, crush the markets. This was Philprints for you. Goodbye.